Hello everyone, I'm Shannon Morrall with Tax Analyst. Thank you for joining us today on Facebook Live. This is day two at the second international conference on taxpayer rights. We are live in Vienna, Austria in the beautiful um, Institute for Austrian and International Tax Law at Vienna University of Economics and Business in this Vienna, Austria. So this conference is sponsored by Tax Analysts and we are doing these Facebook Lives and today I am so excited to have with me, I have Diana Bernal and she Thank is you. the uh, Taxpayer Advocate, is that yes, correct? From, uh, Mexico. from Mexico City, right? Fantastic. And then I have um, Eric and I hope you pronounce your last name. Makawani. Makawani. Yes, right? Thank well. you. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the CEO of South Africa's Tax Ombudsman. So it's fantastic to have you both speaking with us today. And you actually both spoke on a panel last night, a fireside yes. chat, and it was it was fascinating, talking about the issues that ombudsmen's face um, in relation to their various tax agencies in different countries. So we're going to talk a little bit about taxpayer rights here, so I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. Okay. Um, so to start off, how useful is it to have a taxpayer bill of rights? Um, we have one that's codified in the United States. Um, I don't know if either of your countries have yes, one. I think it's a fundamental part because it is very important that taxpayers could know, can know exactly which rights they have. I think if you don't have that kind of, of document, of chapter, sure. it is very difficult to common people to establish exactly the kind of the rights and further the way they can defend your rights. Do you see the future? Yeah, um, um, uh, truly, um, you know, you actually need uh, to have those rights. Unfortunately, yes. we are in a position where we are still working on the document. Okay. Uh, our office was established about three years ago. So, so brand um, new. Brand new yeah. and uh, a lot of um, building. Sure. Um, Laying Learning the process, yeah. Laying, yeah. laying the foundation. But within a month or two, this document will be made available. We have done a draft in conjunction with the Revenue Authority. Oh, fantastic. Um, so that will be available. So it's, it's, a, it's a document to have. Taxpayers should never have to guess what their no. rights are. <laughs> uh, they actually should always know what their rights are in any circumstances when they have dealings with the Revenue Authority. Because in yeah. Mexico, look, you, we have a taxpayer rights in a law, in a federal law, mm -hmm. and it was established since 2004. Actually, I was a, a deputy, a congresswoman, when this law passed by the federal okay. Congress, and nowadays it's a compulsory, mandatory sure. a statement for authorities and also for taxpayers, for taxpayers in order to know perfectly the rights they have and the uh, correct way to defend that kind of rights. Absolutely. All right, so moving on. Do you believe that taxpayer rights should be expressly linked to corresponding obligations? We've talked about having these rules, but do we need to link them to actual obligations? I, I personally would want to de-link. Okay. They must, uh, I mean, there, there's a school of thought that there must always be taxpayer rights and obligations. Yes. But I think when you talk about rights, just spell them out without confusing the two. Okay. Uh, obligations, yes, you can have a set of obligations separate, but uh, I think rights, because we are there to protect those rights. Sure, yeah. And, and to facilitate uh, revenue collection at the end of the day. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. Yes. Because it is very important for taxpayers, I insist, to know their rights. Because traditionally, through the history, all of us know that we have to pay taxes. And I think yes. in some occasions, we, already, we know that and it is enough for taxpayers to know that. But what about the rights? I think this is a modern process. This is a process of the new millennium, even. Wow, okay, thank you. So now let's talk about enforcement mechanisms for these real rights that taxpayers have. Um, if we don't have a cause of action for violations, are they real rights? Well, uh, I believe there should be some form of enforcement. Okay. Um, 
it may take a form of, uh, if there's any violation, there must be a penalty to yes. some extent. Uh, sometimes you, you deal with taxpayers and you're really not sensitive to their pockets and you actually drag them all the way. They spend a lot of money. Oh, yes. Uh, you know <laughs> and if there's no consequence, I mean, really, there's really a problem yeah. with that. So I believe there should be some sort of redress for taxpayers. Uh, it may be in a form of a small penalty and something that can deter officials from behaving um, as if they're a law unto themselves. Yes, actually in Mexico we have several ways to enforce the rights of the taxpayers. A taxpayers can complain behind the tax administration or taxpayer can come easily to our institution to Prodecon in order to defend any kind of right facing a viola violation from tax authority, but it also taxpayers can go to court and demand that tax liability, and even they can challenge the law that establishes the tax. Oh, wow. Even that. Okay. We have constitutional actions in order to challenge tax laws, tax federal laws. Okay, all right. And how important is it that taxpayer ombudsmen be independent from the tax administration in the various countries? It, it is extremely important. Uh, and this is something you discussed last Something time. that yes, we discussed exactly. last time. It's a for minor us, issue, I think. Yes, and for us there have been various pieces of legislation or various sections of the provisions of the legislation that compromise the independence. Okay. First it was with the staffing, how we were staffing the office. Mm -hmm. um, the act provided that you had to have a consultation between the commissioner and the, the ombud in, for any appointment of staff. So sure. in effect that you could, you could actually um, uh, the, have the commissioner control who gets appointed yeah. uh, into to the ombudsman's office. Now, that is was undesirable. We made sure that that was changed. So there's no need for any consultation. And that went with the funding as well. The funding was through the revenue, uh, revenue agency, which is problematic. You can't uh, have your subject of scrutiny uh, fund you. Yeah, that uh, one. That, <laughs> Conflict that, of interest there. Yes. So, so we also made sure that that is changed and so that the funding comes from the minister and uh, along with other things. So independence is at the center for, a, for, for this institution to have credibility. People must look at it and see it's removed from, it doesn't have any links with the, with, with the revenue authority so that it can be able to have ex uh, um, uh, that uh, scrutineering um, uh, powers and with no inhibitions. Yes, Absolutely. I agree. I have to mention that in Mexico, we really have a very strong institution. We are totally independent. We have our own budget. We handle our own budget. I, myself, as a head of the office, I do not respond um, to any uh, federal authority or any federal agency. And that allows us to give to the taxpayers a truly a true defense in order to protect sure, their yeah. rights. That's, I think that's one of the reasons that the last year we attended 142,000 taxpayers wow. in our 30 offices across the country. And I think it is because we are a very strong institution. We have our own law passed to by the Federal Congress. Wow, okay. Well, let's wrap it up. I know we have another panel to go to, but I want to give you guys a break in between. So thank you for joining yeah, us. I really appreciate you. the conversation. Thank you very much. Um, if you're thank unable you. to be here, you can follow along. People are tweeting. We're tweeting um, hashtag taxpayer rights, and we will be doing another discussion at the next break. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.